Jeremiah chapter 1. I was in fasting and praying about 27 years ago. Was it 27 years? Something like that, 27, 28 years ago. I was in serious fasting and serious prayer. Then I found myself in the Bible, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, beginning from verse 9 and 10. That is me. You know, you have heard my story before. I told you I was born in Tamara, and I couldn't make a word. I couldn't make intelli that brain-wise. I, 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 I can try, but speaking was not part of the things I had the ability to do. I had an encounter with Jesus. The Bible says, "And they, and the Lord put forth His hand and touched my mouth." That is me. This is my own story. I, I'm not found in Isaiah. I'm found where. In Jeremiah. Now, if you are not in Isaiah, you are not in Jeremiah, you are not in Zephaniah, you are not in Zechariah, you don't exist. Yeah. You, you are in limbo. You don't have a reference point. He put forth his hand and touched my mouth. That's my story. That's what God did to me. He touched my mouth. And he said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Stop. You're about to go into the guy you're clapping again. <laughs> they clap. The one you did yesterday has covered for the weekend. Even if we come next year, the one you have done this time has covered for next year. He said, I have put my words in your mouth. You need to understand the meaning of that. What does it mean? Does it mean that everything that I wanted you to say, I've given you, I've put it in your mouth so that you can be saying it when I want you to say it? Is that what, what I mean? No. He was telling Jeremiah that there was an impartation of the spirit of utterance upon him. The vocabulary that is required to carry the revelation God will use him to speak. He received it by impartation, the impartation of the spirit of utterance. My, if my mom were here, she would have testified of my inability to speak. I was excellent in class, excellent. I will come out tops, but I can't talk. It was when I had this encounter. God did not only give me the ability to speak, but he gave me utterance. He, he gave me a set of vocabulary. Uh, you will not know that I don't study the dictionary for English. <laughs> oh, he gave me vocabulary, such vocabulary that has the capacity to carry the revelation he has called me to communicate. The moment I know what God wants to say, I don't look for the words. Because he put his words where? In my I have so much confidence in that, that grace of utterance, so much. It's when I teach on the book of Revelation that you will know that, yes, this man, they, they put something inside. The words, the words to communicate the mind of God in simple plain language that Jesus would have done if he were physically present teaching us. He came to me by... I don't want to take you to First uh, Corinthians chapter 2 to explain that scripture more, but then after he gave me all utterance, he now said, See, I have this day set thee over nations. This is where I discovered that I had an international ministry over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant. Can you see that four of his activities were destructive? Only two were constructive. Can you see? You are not following me. You are not. Uh -huh. That's why. That's how my ministry is. When somebody comes and is beginning to build falsehood in the body of Christ, I can't sleep until I break it. I can't sleep. Because I'm called to do what? To root out. 
to pull down, to destroy. Some people try to attack me because that is physically, because I scattered the falsehood they were building. They died overnight. Because I was not doing it. It was not me doing it. It's my calling. I, the great one called me to do it. Who am I? My calling empowers me to have that authority in the body of Christ. And that is the reason why I paid the price in terms of physical discipline to live right. So that I can have the moral latitude to tell you that you, that you are in sin, that you are in darkness even now. Are you there? Now, so, 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 it, 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 to pull down, to destroy, to throw down before we build and plant. So, I'm also a builder and planter, but I'm a destructive instrument. And I understand myself very well. And, and God told me that this kind of ministry, you are going to be persecuted. So, I'm at home with persecution. It's part of the what? The package. If you don't know the anointing you carry and the errand that the anointing is sent to accomplish, you will cry behind the cupboard. There is an unusual grace God gives me when men try to fight me. Oh, I become anointed. I grow. <laughs> because it is part of my calling. Who are you? Have you found your scripture? The scripture that reveals your identity. That's why you don't know your battles. That's why you don't understand your seasons. That's why you don't know your cycles. That's why you don't understand the ammunition that Satan is using against you because you don't know who you are. The people that came for John say, what do you say about yourself? Many people have said many things about you, but now, what are you saying about Remember, Babylon wants to give you another identity. So that you will live off a different perspective that is incongruous with your destiny in the kingdom of God. Are you there? So the anointing that you carry, the understanding of that anointing gives you an insight into your description in the kingdom of God. You must have heard me say this again and again. But if you want everybody on the street to like you, what do you do? Sell ice cream sell ice cream just go and look for ice cream and you you blow the horn Ooh! the whole place but if you want to do ministry <laughs> ah. Yacabo, Maria, I didn't choose this I didn't choose this the great one he did he made me a customs officer so when people are trafficking with contraband no, this is not of the kingdom. This is of darkness. Because many people have said, oh, this, this guy is just a trouble. So he likes trouble. It's, it is what is here that makes you like that. Jesus knew the errand of the anointing that was upon this man. Find your scripture. Find yourself in the holy book. There is a verse that speaks about you. There's a chain of scriptures that describes your manifestation. The Bible being a prophetic book anticipated your coming and your journey is captured in scriptures. The anointing that you carry is the description of your identity. Give me first Timothy chapter 2 verse 7 as I try to close that up and go to number 2 quickly. We don't have time to talk. Today is for signs and wonders. So this is the anointing that was upon Paul. This is the ability of the anointing that was upon Apostle Paul. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 7, he speaks about that anointing. But I would like us to begin the reading from verse number 6 before we move into 7. Can you go to 6? Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto... I am ordained a preacher. So, Apostle Paul had the anointing of a preacher. I am ordained an apostle. He had the anointing of apostleship to establish, to extend the frontiers of the kingdom of God 
to extend the uh, coverage of God's reign and dominion. He had such authority rooted in the apostolic anointing that he had. He said, I speak the truth in Christ, I lie not a teacher. So, Apostle Paul had the anointing of a preacher. What a preacher does is that he motivates people after righteousness. What a teacher does is that he grants people into the ideologies and the ideals of the kingdom of God. What the apostle does is that he opens new frontiers for the kingdom and brings the body of Christ into the new things and the new technologies that God is making available to the body. He was able to identify that the grace of a preacher, the grace of a teacher, and the grace of the apostle was upon his life. The difference between me and Apostle Paul is that Apostle Paul was first a preacher. Are you there? Then an apostle, then a teacher. I am first a teacher. Then an apostle before a preacher. So any man serving God should be able to describe the texture of the ability, the grace that is at work on his life. It will give you an insight to know what God has not called you to do. So you, you will just fuck up Jesus Christ. Are you there? Those days when we were in the village, one man said he had an encounter with Jesus. And that Jesus told him that he was going to build a 30,000 city auditorium in a certain city that is a revivalist of our generation. That heaven has endorsed him. Uh, do you know what? That is vision was only true in his diary. That was. <laughs> may, may the things God has spoken to you may it not die in your diary. In the name of Jesus. I'm ordained a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher. I am ordained a teacher, an apostle, and a preacher. But what are you ordained? Or you, 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 it's only the poster and the hand bill that knows that you are a prophet. But there is no deposit of the prophetic in your life. When you try to behave like a prophet, you lie to deceive the congregation. If there is something you are ordained, find it. Stop masquerading. Ministry is not that hard. God is the one that gives us the, the empowerment to do his will. God will not call you to serve his will and not give you what it takes to do so. If you decide to stand under a false identity, you will need to be doing it stage management until old age. I think it will, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, it's a great body. It's, it's a body, it's a body, it's a body. Find the, the, the anointing that is upon your life. To flow in the teaching anointing, it comes so easily to me. Like when I finished preaching this morning, I didn't know how, what I would preach this evening. I went to this person and I stretched myself. And I will remain there until he comes. So he came to me and said, go this way. The moment he gives me the idea, what to say is not a problem. To build the architecture of the emphasis, he doesn't need to. He has already given me the software to develop that. Uh, uh, it, 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 it depends on how many hours you are willing to stay here. That software can produce results, can produce. It's an ancient one, ancient software that was downloaded. Because I have grace to expound the counsel of God. I have grace to teach. And it is not by power. I'm not saying this to exalt myself. I am nothing without grace. If you see me without grace, the symptoms of stammering will come back and you will know there's nothing good in me to behold. Oh, one of those times we... I did something, the Holy Ghost was angry and he left. All the stammering he delivered me from. He, you don't want to see me like that. <laughs> so he showed me that he did not deliver me from the stammering. No. Any day I become stubborn. So because I know that I will end up stammering again, I, I decided to follow him. Ah! If you see, you know, you will never see me. Ah! Jesus when you know who you are then you can understand the workings of the 
anointing that is upon your life you will flow in it how many of you were in the service this morning it was here i got that message when they those guys were doing like this in the morning it didn't drop <laughs> so when they were doing that thing like, like this and i was laughing it was not because i was seeing them all. I, I was something the anointing was bringing something. you need to know who you are in the name of jesus christ number two when you study your the anointing that is upon your life it gives you an idea of who you are in the spirit Number two, when you study the assignment that God has given you, it gives you an idea of who you are in the spirit. Galatians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Galatians 2, verse 7 and 8. Can you go to 7, uh, verse 5? Then we'll do 5, 6, 7, 8. Galatians 2, 5. To whom we give place by subjection no not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you but of these who seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were it maketh no matter to me god accepted no man's person for there who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me this is paul speaking that they went to a conference. They went for a conference. Are you there? So many people came somewhere, had titles, big titles. And the man is saying that the people that seem to be somewhat, the people that seem to be, have the loudest names. When they came for the conference, they discovered that what? They added nothing to him. This poor. Hey, hey, you see, when you begin to know who you are, you begin to discover that there are a certain people that have the grace to be able to minister to you. That's when you begin to discover your clan, the language in your clan, the emphasis in your clan. You know, the body of Christ is vast, but you belong to a clan. When you hear the voice of your clan, you will know, oh, mm, I understand this language. It ministers to the core of my being. Paul went to conference and he said that the people that were what? Who seemed to be somewhat in conference, they added what? Nothing to me. Next verse. But contrary wise, when they saw in the same conference, are you there? That the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. You see his anointing was in keeping with a certain strange assignment. He was the one that was designed by God as a technocrat that would take the gospel to the uncircumcised. And they saw that that was how his anointing was functioning. Because of the assignment that God gave him. And he, he now understood that uh, uh, Paul, Peter was the guy that had the anointing to reach out to the Jews. When they discovered this, what happened? For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostol apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. This was the workings of the anointing that he had. Next verse. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. They identified them according to their assignment and the effectual workings of the grace of God upon their life. Now, I, I, I'm praying that a day will come in the body of Christ where, where people will be accepted according to the description of the grace of God that is at work in them. You know, you know, you know, are you there? That level of knowledge needs to come into the body of Christ. That this is what Jehovah sent this man to do. We need to give him a right hand of fellowship in keeping with the grace and the stature that he has in the body of Christ. Today, 
We know men after the flesh. But Paul says henceforth. Know we no man after the flesh. Every man is supposed to be known in the crucible of his ordination. In the depth of the investment of God that is upon his life. So that we can accept them according to what God had made them. Your assignment is a description of your identity. So Paul knew that he was an ambassador to the Gentiles. He wasn't looking for pulpits in Jerusalem. He wasn't looking for pulpits in Judea. He knew that his place was in Assyria. In fact, are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Are you, do you know that Damascus, where he met with Jesus, was not in Jerusalem, was not in Israel, it was in Assyria. Even where God encountered him was not in, in the land of Israel because his, his destiny was international. He was going to go beyond home to be a witness to people that had no knowledge of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There was a different kind of training that he needed in order for him to be competent in that kind of mission. Today all of us are cloned to be alike. Meanwhile, the anointing upon us is not alike. Oh my God, I pray your eyes will be open to understand what I'm saying this evening. Our strength in the body of Christ is tied to our diversity. But today cloning is confused for covering. And people come out and they are not fully furnished. They don't have a grip on the handle of grace. And when they meet with Satan, they are no match. Territories conquer people, swallow people up. Mission fields swallow up people because they don't understand. They have not grown in the dexterity of the spiritual capital that God has made available to them. He said the pillars of the house of God identified him and the pillars there were three of them there James Peter and John they identified him if we go further because many people say that Paul didn't have a father in the Lord if we go further I will show you how that he submitted under Peter because this is uh, the scripture from whence people say they were colleagues but that was not the case I will show you I will show you but that's not the argument tonight. Just forget about it. The pillars identified that Paul had the grace that they did not have. So they gave them the right hand of fellowship to go into their mission field because their identity was consistent with their anointing. It, the anointing upon your life, you can only understand it fully when you know the assignment it was designed to accomplish. They gave us the right hand of fellowship and then did what? that we should go unto the hidden and there unto the circumcision. That is what we call meiosis. You know, we have mitosis and meiosis. This is meiosis. This is what we call cellular differentiation. Some people knew that the anointing they had was, was designed for the Jews and they were going to face that mission field squarely. People like Peter, people like Paul were released to the hidden. He became the first apologist that could begin to preach the gospel by going to where their shrine. He will see their gods and then see that, okay, this one has no labor. He begins his argument from the unknown God. Because he couldn't quote the Bible to those guys. They had no reference point. They did not believe in the authority of the Bible. This man was a philosopher and a scholar. And he had to be that in order for him to preach to the Greeks and Athens, the home of philosophy. He fell to Jesus because there was a man called Apostle Paul. He said there are fields that are vacant because the people that are supposed to operate there have not understood the anointing that they carry. I pray tonight that the Holy Spirit will grant you illumination. You will know what God has put upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
Oh my God. I'm not called as a worshiper. When I, this, the other day, are you, do, you, do you know that I used to play? Yes. So I now discovered I would spend eight hours here playing reggae. And I was not excelling. I went to inquire of the Lord. Is this, he, he said there's nothing like this. So I, I left it. Because I can't prosper. You don't understand it. Okay, take your guitar. Take your guitar. Let, let it, he, he will do something now. You, you, you can't just begin to do this kind of thing. There must be grace first. Before you come here. I was doing this type. Reggae. Bum, 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 bum. Hey, what, what is that reggae song that we used to sing again? Um, ah, I become old. <laughs> now, this is the, the reggae song in Nigeria. Give me, just strike your, your chord. Jesus is the answer. No, reggae, reggae. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no order. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. If you leave, if you leave her now, we'll, we'll, we'll. the idea, I didn't say support me, don't support me. So that was what I was doing, this type. But may you not be in the wrong place in the name of you. If we allow her now, the Holy Ghost will seize the service. We, are, we don't want that dimension yet. Because these ones have the anointing for worship. They can compel God to come down. Yes. My own anointing is teaching. As I'm teaching, God comes down. That's the proof that he called me to teach. If you do what you are doing and God doesn't come down, stop and go and ask God. I, am I? No! A lot of us get... Okay, 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 okay. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Colossians chapter 1 verse 23 I think I will stop there even though there are some other points there are a few points but I have to stop I was, like, I was doing play, playing keyboard then the symptoms of the stammering was still there I was already in the university then Jesus now encountered me and said I put my words recently my pastor that I played keyboard for came and saw what God was doing with me and said you are you the one I don't know how this is <laughs> grace and he blessed me you bless me bless me because nobody knew that the keyboard boy will be an apostle to nations. You see, you don't look like your calling. You don't look like it. The way you are looking, sister, the way you are, you are looking, you don't look like your calling. The calling will reveal you in such a way that your mother has never identified you. He said, if you continue with the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I am made a minister. Now, now, now stop there. Can you, do you know why you were made a minister? Paul knew. Because he could not separate his life, his meaning from his calling, his assignment. 
He said, this is why I am made. What? A minister. Go on. 